We're doing the blue sheet at the moment. The introductory task on the blue sheet, we want to get started there. So we warm up, ready for the lesson. This is going to have things that will involve in the let the we'll need for the lesson today. So do these first one, first few tasks to start off with. And then we'll get someone to bring up their answers for us. Hey Michael, you want to bring yours up and show us what you did? Okay, tell us what you did for the first one. Okay, so if there's an area, you just go base times height, the rectangle, so it's okay. 14, 23. Okay, so easy one to start off with. Okay, area of a rectangle, make sure our calculations, our calculations are correct. Yep, 322 square metres. Okay, what about the next one? Okay, because that's twice the length of the one of the sides. There's two, two x, and then you multiply by x, and it's the error. Okay, so one side's x, let the other one be? Two x. Does anyone use a different pro numeral? Y. y. y, yep. Does it matter what pro numeral we use? No, it's just let one be, one pro numeral, doesn't say, so you can choose whatever pro numeral you like. Okay, could you simplify that one? Yes. Two x squared. Two x squared, okay. What about the next one, question three? Yeah, because it's a square, uh, both base and height are equal. So okay. So because it was a cube, you know you've got all faces which are? Equal. They're equal as well, yep. So one side is 9, and because six sides multiplied by 6. Okay. Who got 54 square metres as well? Excellent. So the idea there that we've got six faces, they're all exactly the same. So we know one face must have an area of. Three, uh, three by three, which gives us the nine. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. So that's going to lead into what we want to do today. Okay. And if you have a look at what we want to be able to do, we want to be able to work with what we call surface areas. Do we remember what surface area is from last year? No? Some people? Okay. Because if you didn't, that's okay. Because that's what we want to be able to work with today. But we're going to be working with the idea of the surface area and we're particularly with a rectangular prism okay now you what you just did will relate to what we need to be able to do today so what I want you to do is start off with have a look at our main task to start so read through it so what word what words don't we understand first if there are any words we don't understand there okay well that's what I'm gonna need you to work, be able to work out okay what do we mean by surface area, Maurice? Do we know? The area of the surface of the prism. Area of the surface of the prism. Okay, so that makes sense. Where do we just see that? The cube. In the cube. There, Michael worked out the face of one cube, of one side of the cube, one face, and then multiplied it by six because he knew they were all the same. Okay, so that's what we mean by surface area. Okay. So we want to be able to work out the outside. Now, what's different about this problem? Okay, yeah, we're, we're going a little bit different with this one. Okay, we've got, we know what the surface area is, we have to work out what's the, what does our rectangular prism look like. That's a little bit different. Okay, any other questions about the words? There, dimensions we're okay with? We understand what, what we mean by dimensions? Yeah. Nick, what do we mean by dimensions there? So like the length and the breadth and the width. Okay, good. You're looking like you weren't too sure. Okay, you're perfectly able to explain that. Okay, and I've labelled them there if you want to help, that, that's going to help you. Can you go down the bottom of that first page? Can you write what the problem wants you to do? If you haven't done so already, some of you have already gotten into that. Then, what are you going to do to solve the problem? Okay, have you got some ideas as you've read the problem? Have you thought about some problem solving strategies? You thought about what you might be needed to use? Remember, this is our first two steps of Polya's problem solving. What does the problem want me to do? How am I going to try and solve the problem? Because we can't just go in without a plan of attack. We need some sort of plan of attack. We need some sort of thing to think about, okay, what might I try to do this? Okay, keep thinking. Good work, Maurice. You're looking at our strategies up there. Okay, good. Okay, we've got our problem-solving strategies up, up the top of the board. 
So Maurice is having a look and using those ideas. Okay, Ajesh, what did you write down for, what does the problem want me to do? Two possible dimensions for X, Y, and Z. Okay, two sets of dimensions. Okay, what did you say, four? For, the, for X, Y, and Z. For X, Y, and Z. And what's X, Y, and Z representing? The dimensions. Of? Which type of breath? Of what type of shape, though? Uh, rectangular. rectangular prism. So we've got to make sure we're understanding we're working with a rectangular prism. Okay, so we're all happy with what a rectangular prism is. Two sets of shapes. Maurice, you had a look on the board. What would, what would you, what type of problem solving steps were you looking to do, use? Make a drawing. Make a drawing, okay. So you've got, the, you've got one there, you can start playing around with that. Good, so drawing, I think drawing it will, uh, will definitely help, yep. Uh, you could use like the ratios of the sides to the top. Okay, so you might have a look at some ratios to sides, of sides to the, in the, in the dimensions, good. Trial and error. Trial and error, we can. How efficient is it do you think it will be? Not, not, as efficient. Not, not as efficient. So we're looking for other strategies first. Man, did you have some, anything else you might try and use? Oh, try and think of some formulas, okay? So is there some formulas that we can start to work with here? Okay, did you work with some formulas in the introductory task? Yes. Yeah, so you think they might help? Yes. Okay, so there's some suggestions to try and use. We've got about four or five suggestions. Okay, at five to one, one being least confident, five being the most confident, how confident are we to do this task? Show me, show our hands. Okay, so we're seeing lots of threes. Okay, some fours. Okay, no one with a five at this stage. Uh, oh no, there's a five, there's five. Okay, four and a half. Okay, so. Have a go at this, have a go. I'll come round and, and check and see how we're going and see if we need some more hints. Keep thinking about what we can do. What would the surface area look like? That's what you, that's what you really got to look for, isn't it? Wouldn't the surface area be like just, just Y and Z? Like that excess of the only one side. How many sides have you got? How many sides did you have to the cube? So how many sides have you got to the... Okay. What did you know about in the cube? They're all the same. What do we know about this one? They could be different, couldn't they? Okay, because it doesn't say it's a cube, it's different. So are X, Y and Z going to be the same? Okay. So I, I, I don't think that's right. I think you need to explore a little bit further. Okay. Think about... Think about the hints that people talked about and think about your strategies. What else can you do, okay? You, have you asked for a hint? Would someone might be able to give you a hint of what they're, trying to, they're thinking about, okay? Have good discussions, ask good questions. Where do we get this one from? We're, we're taking this track, where, where do we get this one from? Um, if we try to do it like how we did it before, it's mm -hmm. a cube, so we, we can't just times it by six at the end. Yep. So we have to get two sets of, because like, their face. Okay, so you know the opposite faces yeah. are? Yeah. Equal, are the same? Good, okay. So it's just like getting two sets of... Okay, so where's the 2x and 2y come from? Like, um, oh no, it's two outside the x and y. Okay, so can you check... There we go, okay. Yeah, I was trying to work out each side, like each face, yep. and then times by two because there's two of each. Okay, good, yep, okay. And then, okay, so find out, like, make it more out of two money. Okay. So, yep, so you're seeing if you can get some numbers to work to start off with. Okay. Yeah, there's six sides. Of the six sides added together? Yes. Okay, like we have with the cube. They, they basically, that's what you did with the cube, is you found the surface area. Okay. So, got, so there's, there's three different uh, lengths of the mm -hmm. sides because it's a rectangle. So that's, that's the front view, that's the side view, and that's the top view. Yep. Would you do that times two because there's two of us? That times two because there's two of us. Yep. That, 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 that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So you know, because does that give you six sides? That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know you're on you're on the right track. From that, would you go nine six divided by three? That gives you thirty-two. Wouldn't be divided by three. Divided by six. No, I wouldn't divide it by six either. What's common to all those? Think about what what they'd add up to. 
first before you start dividing. Yeah, but, but think about what that starts to look like when you add those together. You know it's going to total 96, but what does that look like before you do any dividing? Oh, I got one. Uh, 4.8 equals 2, y equals 10, and z equals 4. So if you do x times z, that's 8, and then if you double it, so that's 16. Why would you double it? Because it's here and then here. Okay, so every everyone's got so two sides, hasn't it? And, uh, yep. Well, think about that. Do they, could they be equal? It's still a rectangular prism, isn't it? Technic technically, if you think about the cube, think about what we're doing with, we were talking our discussion last week about rectangles, that squares are rectangles, but rectangles aren't squares. So you can think about, still think about that, because all those plain shapes still transfer across to our prisms. One of our suggestions earlier on was to, to do a um, diagram. Has anyone got a decent diagram they think they can show us? that might give us an idea what to do. Have a, have a look at the diagram that Jaden's drawn. Do we recognise what that one is? Okay. So, why'd you go with the net? To get um, each measurement of the um, side. Okay, so notice that he's, he's matching everything up. He's got the, the X and the Ys. He's even using his correct noted, uh, um, markings there on the sides to show which ones are equal. So see, there's, a, there's an example of how you can open it up, see all the areas that you want to. Okay? So, nice work. Thanks, Jaden. So there's, a, there's another hint. If you, different people have drawn different diagrams, and that's okay. That's okay. But if you're looking for a, di a diagram to use, okay, there's one, there's one that might help. How did we do it the other day? We had three variables and we still figured it out. Mm -hmm. Is this coming down to a simultaneous equation? Kind of. What do, we, what do we need for our simultaneous equations though the other day? Two different yeah. equations. We needed two different equations. Have we, are we looking for two different equations here? No, we're looking for one. No, we're just looking for one. So what could we try? Once you've got, when you've got an equation... Well, I've got an equation. What might you try to, to get some values from it? To get one, at least one variable. Well, well, yeah, choose one. Choose one to start off with. I chose X. Well, what, but can you choose a value for X? Maybe. So pick a value for X that could work, and then you can start to see what the others might be. Because it's not a simultaneous equation, though, is it? Because remember, with the, even with the ones we saw the other day, we had three. <coughs> to get the X, Y, Z, we had three equations that we needed. We needed three relationships to get the three. Dom? Is that right? So what's the surface area? Is it 96? 96, yeah. Yeah. So is that right? Surface area equals two times the width? Yep. Okay. So what would you know about this one then? If the surface area is 96, what would you know about this part? That would equal half of 96. Okay. So you start see how you're starting to simplify your relationships. Okay, we've got some numbers that work yet? I thought we had one circle. <laughs> okay. Well, we had circle. Because we, we decided that the x times y times 2 would make that 16. Mm -hmm. So we just did 2 times 8 and okay. it was 32. And we did 2 times 2. Okay, so if you pick x and if you pick x is 2 and y is 8, <coughs> say, yeah, can you start to work out, or can you... What's your, what's your total relationship to say, okay, what would Z be then? Yeah, that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay. So what, what's your, and that's what I was saying before, what, what does your overall, what would it over, look like overall? Would have obviously yeah, when you've got an equation, because if you can put X is equal to 2 and Y is equal to 8, like you've said there, that will bring you down to, you can get an equation with one variable, which is exactly what you want, because you can solve it then. So there is an equation with one variable? Well, you, but that's what, that's what you'd like to get to, yeah. As it stands, the equation you guys got have got three variables. So remember to get one variable, you need the other two. But you could start choosing ones that, you know, start to work. Could you just choose any number? But that's, you have to check, and that's not efficient. 
Well, no, but can you start to pick some to work out others and see if they work? And then some numbers that won't work. I already tried three, eight, and four. Okay, so it doesn't work exactly. How close did you get though? Well, if you if you pick three, just say you pick three and eight. What must so what did you say three, eight, and four doesn't work? What if you had three and eight? Could what number would work with three and eight? Yes, sir. Okay. So have you got the relationship between all your side, all the faces, with ninety six to see whether you can get that to work? See if that starts to work out. Rather than picking three numbers that might work, you pick two to see if the third you can get a third one that might work. How are we going? We've got. Is there anything that works yet? I have found the key. So Sorry. All that matters. I found the small helping key. Yep. Which so then a side has to add up to eight and sixteen and then twenty-four. Okay. Yeah. Like faces. Okay. It's going to work on the other side. That's just using the fractions. Okay. Yep. So, have you worked out dimensions that are going to match that exactly? No. No, okay, so there, there's, your, there's your challenge. You've chosen the 2 and 8, so you know that... So, this is 32. One of them would come to, like, say, so x and y, that's 16, so 32 there. What would, what would that... What would you get from those, the rest of it, though, then? Set up an, try and set up an equation. If you can set up an equation... You might, I, I think you're really close to getting it. So I'm really confused with stuff. Okay. So you've got those three, which is good. Okay, and you've got them equal to 96. So what relationships are you looking for with X, Y, and Z to get there? That's what you're, that's what you're trying to get. There we go, Chris. Did you justify it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, you want to come and show us what you've got? Let's have a look up on the screen. Chris has got a solution which I think a number of people have picked up on. Okay? So, let's just zoom in a little bit. So, explain to us what you did, Chris, and what your thinking was. Alright, so firstly I split up the um, 3D shape into six 2D shapes. Which tables did that? It's, who, split it, who split it up into the six, six faces? Well, everybody did it. I saw it on everybody's table. You all picked that there's got to be six faces we've got to do. Okay? Which is important with surface area. We've got to be able to know how many, how many faces we've got to, to check on. Yep. Keep going, Chris. Uh, and then I labelled each of them um, from A to F. And I used F, the smallest one. And I, I labelled it as F being one. And then I used C and D as being twice F. And A and B being three times F. As shown over here. Okay, so Chris has got brought into an idea is like, okay, let's let's have a look and see if my faces were in some sort of ratio. So if I double one one area and then tripled the area, not a bad way to go about it. Okay, and see if I see if we can get a solution from that. And then all of them together is 12f, and so 96 centimeters squared is 12f, and if you divide that 96 divided by 12 it equals 8 centimeters. So f equals 8. So who did that as well? Who got that idea? Okay. So one, the smallest, the smallest face is eight. Then the next size up was sixteen. Then eight twenty-four. Okay. There was a few other people who got that as I saw as I went round. Yep. And then if you use that formula using these, so um, you get these answers. So be, um, that equals the area of each um today's shape. Each one. So the A and B would be 24, C and D 16, and um, B and F would be 8 each. Okay, can you slow it up to show, the just, show us your justification, how you justified your solution? So two, X is 2, Y is 8, and Z is 4. So notice that Chris has put down all the faces, showed the addition, and Notice that they all start to match up when he's using the X times the Y and the Y times the Z. Now, does it matter what order these ones are? It doesn't really matter. Like you could have had Y is equal to 8 and X is equal to 2 and Z is equal to 4. Like if you had the same thing but just different values in different pronumerals, 
it doesn't really matter because, as we said, someone said before, it's really just we're looking at one as the, as the breadth, one as the height, and one as the length. Okay? Who else got, who else got, you guys got that solution? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Who else, it? Andrew? No, you didn't get that one? I'm lost. You're lost? That's okay. That's okay. But did you understand what Chris did? Yeah, that's the way it is. It's too much maths. <laughs> too much maths. No such thing. Maurice, you guys had a different solution. Okay, you want to quickly show us your one? Thanks, Chris. Okay, what did you do first? So basically, we had to first work out what the surface area was. So then, to, and so we, to try to simplify it a bit. So, so everyone got this, understand what they've written here. Uh, yeah. Okay, instead of X and Y, they've used width, length, and height. They okay, just use three different variables. So does that, does that make sense of what they've done? Yeah. Okay, the area of each face, and then what have you, what's the two mean? So the two means two times that by two. Okay, yeah. Because each side, because each side. Cause okay, because each side of the rectangular prism was opposite and equal. Okay, yep. So then to simplify a bit, we just put four, we divided the surface area by two, I think it was 48. So you know, this, well, what you've got there has got to equal to 48, okay? So Chris did a little bit different where he kept working with the six of them, okay? Still works out, and where they've got the 48 there, okay? Now, how do we get about doing these ones? Um, get some check. Get some check. So did you, was it just a straight out, let's just... No, uh, we used... Um, crunch numbers until they worked, or...? Really, it was... It was four, six, and two, so two times that, and then two times three. Okay. And then that didn't work, so we put four point five. Okay, so you chose, chose four, six, and two, yeah. and got close to forty-eight, yeah. and then went okay. If we change it to four point five, it got us to forty-eight. It got got you to the forty-eight. So there was good collaboration. Don will just come up and put his underneath to show the justification. There's their numbers there. So the twelve, two times the four point five, the nine, and double it, six point five, uh, four point five times six, twenty-seven all come out to 96, okay? So that was, so you got ones that were close, and then, okay, let's manipulate that one a little bit. Okay, thanks, Dom. So, a couple of different ways people went around doing that. Can I just show you how I looked at this one? When I did this one, I did the way Jaden did. I, I went through and had a look at getting the net of it. Okay, it's not a bad way to do it, but, if you just listed all the different shapes, that's fine, okay? Um, I also did along the lines of you guys, okay, with Dom and Maurice were talking about, two times each of the faces, okay? We, and I got that relationship of 48, okay? So I've, I was talking with Andrew and we were talking about the idea that really, I. This is a bit like some of the equations we were doing last week where we have tried to find the three variables, which were quite difficult. But when I said to him, is it a simultaneous equation situation? It's not. Why, why wasn't it, Andrew? <laughs> You've got one equation. What would we need? What did we see last week, Mark? You were saying? Uh, there were multiple equations that we had, like multiple yeah, equations that we equations. had to find, yeah. Yeah, so we had more than one equation to work with. Okay, we had two variables, we had two relationships, two equations to work with. And we had three last week, so we had needed three relationships. This is only one. So this basically is saying like there's more than one solution that's going to work for this. Okay, and we saw two there. How could I, how could I get a, go about doing this? Well, you guys were really close. And you see, can you see how your answer could work? What numbers did you guys pick? Two, four, eight. Two, four, eight. So got, it finally got there with the eight. So any num you can choose any numbers you like, really. Within reason, you can't go too high because it's got to have a sum of 96. But you could start picking x being equal to, so say your x is equal to two and y was equal to, uh, say even one. What can that do for me? Well, I can start to substitute it in and say two times z plus y times z, so one times z, plus the y, uh, x times y, which would be, two would equal 48. What does that do for me, Andrew, you said? An equation with, with one variable. An equation with one variable. I can work out what the value of z could be. Okay? So I can start to work out 
any value of z. As long as I'm picking ones that are uh, uh, for x and y, I can work out my third value. Okay? Now, am I restricted in the numbers? Well, it's, I can't get, I couldn't obviously pick one value being 100, could I? What would happen there? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, surface area is only 96 square centimetres. So if I pick one dimension as 100, it's, I'm not going to be able to pick any other values that are going to work. So we are restricted in certain values, but we can start to pick lots of different values that are going to work for us. Okay, so there is, Brad asked how many solutions there were. How many solutions do you think we could have? A lot, A lot mathematically we call that? Infinite. Infinite. Okay. So, can we turn over? Tell me what you're thinking with your problem solving today. Your reflection today is about what you did with your problem solving. So, doesn't need necessarily to have you got a correct answer, but seeing some of the solutions that people got, with your problem solving and the different tacks you took today, did that, what, what, were you on the right track? Did you change your mind because you saw something that didn't work? Okay, and then as we said before, that's often as powerful as getting, a, getting the answer out first go. Because you, you might have worked out today that, yep, this, this prep method of problem solving actually isn't a good one for this type of problem. And that's okay. That means that you've actually learned something about, what you, what, about this type of task. So it's a, you're talking about your problem solving. Okay? Not whether you got the task, not whether you got the solution. So hopefully after you've had a go and you've seen solutions from Chris and from Reese and Dom, okay, we're getting that idea of what we mean by surface area today. So determining the surface area, how do we go about it? And from what I saw on everybody's table, you were all on the right track. You knew what to be able to do. It's just this task was difficult and a little bit uh, different. So you made you think a bit harder about it, which is not a bad thing. So for homework, can you make sure you grab the yellow sheet out of the folder? When you finish your um, reflection, you can put the, the blue sheet back into the folder and grab the yellow sheet and have a go at that task for homework. Also for homework tonight, can you, um, we're going to be starting to do some bit of revision, okay, on some of the things we need to keep going back over. So I've put a revision worksheet on Edmodo. It's only about five, should only take about five minutes there. It's not many questions, but it's just going to be regular revision that we need to, to go through and keep, and keep in touch with. We know what we're doing for homework. We put it in our diaries. Try and take what we saw in the solutions and apply it to the consolidation task. Tonight for homework. Keep thinking about our surface area, okay? What does it mean by the surface area? What does our faces need to look like? What we might have and what, we, what can we use in our problem? Reading it carefully and getting that correct data.